Welcome, Rooted Fellowship family, to our podcast time. Jono here. I'm here with Pastor Oni, and we have the privilege of navigating us through a podcast, which we haven't done for a while. Uh, and so it's good to be back behind the microphones and discussing God's Word. It's kind of one of those good news, bad news situations. Well, last week, Sunday, we had some technical uh, glitches, and so we weren't able to record our sermon text for this past Sunday. But we decided, man, this is, gives us an amazing opportunity to jump on the podcast, something we haven't done in, gosh, Pastor Oni, maybe... It's been Two a while. Years. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, let's dive into the text. Let's maybe give uh, some of our people some, some more, some bigger handles to kind of get into the text with. And so we're excited. We're excited about being able to gather together and, uh, and discuss and dive deeper into God's Word. We, we started the book of Hebrews this past Sunday, yes. and yes. it was an incredible blessing. If you weren't there, uh, we're sorry, but this is also going to serve as a blessing to you. We have no doubt. And then uh, we, we thought, man, it would be great to, to double-click some of the, the golden nuggets that Pastor One took us through. So, uh, Pastor One, so, so excited. Uh, how are you feeling about, uh, about this, uh, this, this podcast this morning? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to be, like you said, behind the mic again. Um, this is just another way to put content out there, um, good content, uh, yeah. rich theological content. Uh, that's what we're about. You know, Spoiler alert, mm-hmm. Rooted Fellowship is about making much of Jesus and sharing yeah. him with as many Amen. people as we can. And and so uh, whenever there's an opportunity to do that, uh, I'm going to definitely put my hand up. And so yeah. it's, it's good to be here and good to be with you. Uh, Jono, uh, the pastor of uh, our congregational pastor uh, here at Richard Fellowship, who does so much uh, oh. for all of you. So so thank you. Man, such a privilege, such a privilege. Thanks, Pastor Donnie. So uh, every year, Richard Fellowship, we preach through a Old Testament book and a New Testament book. Uh, so, but this year, things might be a little bit different. Why is that the case? Yeah, so uh, so you're right. Uh, the, the goal is to walk through a New Testament book and an Old Testament book. Uh, this year, we're only going to do a uh, New Testament book, right? Uh, and that is the book of Hebrews. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and the reason we're not doing an Old Testament book, two reasons. One is because the book of Hebrews is so long uh, to really engage in it. I mean, it's going to take us 23 sermons, and sure, I think even sure. that is you know, barely scratching the surface, wow. but I, I yeah. didn't want us to be too long in it. Um, so, so it's a long book. Uh, but the, the other reason is that it has so much Old Testament in it. Uh, and so we're going to be navigating through the Old Testament. Yeah. Um, we're going to be, we're going to be, for lack of better words, forced to. You can't study the book of Hebrews, which is in the New Testament, without going to the Old Testament um, so because the writer references so much from there. So, oh, so that's why. Man. Excited, excited! I'm so excited for these next 23 weeks. It's not going to be 23 weeks in a row, though, right? We're gonna we're gonna break it up. A yeah, bit. definitely. Yeah, okay. for those folks who are going, oh my goodness, <laughs> the next 23 weeks we're just sitting in the Book of Hebrews, which is there's nothing wrong with that. Sure, but sure. Uh, but yeah, we recognize good breaks in between are, are helpful. So there'll be other sermon series that we'll be doing, um, but Hebrews will take us much mm. of the year. Wonderful. Okay, so we're going to be in Hebrews for 2023. Wonderful. Uh, why Hebrews? I mean, sure. I I, I mean. I mean God's word is God's word, yeah. so we want to be in, in every part of God's word. Yeah. But why Hebrews for our church, our family at this time? This one is a bit of a personal one. Um, I, I love the book of Hebrews. Uh, when I look at the New Testament, uh, there's two books that I, I love a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one is Ephesians. All right. uh, so if you've been well, with Rooted for a while, if you've been uh, a member at Rooted, you yeah. you know that we've been we've swam in, in Ephesians quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Um but I also love the book of Hebrews, and I, I, I think there's a lot in there. Yeah. Um, there's so much uh, that the writer of Hebrews picks up on and addresses. Uh, and I think sometimes we, you know, we don't look at those things anymore because sometimes we'll think you know, they're not relevant mm. because he is pointing us back to the Old Testament. But, sure. but he's doing that with intention. And, um, and I think if we understand the book of Hebrews the way that uh, the writer intended it to be understood, uh, it opens up a lot of not just the New Testament, but the Bible sure, as a whole. Sure. Um, so I'm excited for that. Mm. It's, it's been, you know, seven, eight years in the making. Oh, man, I know when, when we planted Rooted Fellowship, you know, I remember saying to myself, I'd love to, to preach Hebrews at Rooted, but just never felt like the time was right. Mm. And, um, and so now feeling like God is going, okay, we're, we're post, post-COVID restrictions, yeah. Yeah. post-crisis. Um, 
this might be a good book to, yeah. to get into. So excited, man. I'm, I'm so looking forward to unlocking the Old Testament with this book of Hebrews with you. Um, you mentioned, you said something interesting on Sunday, and you, and you said something interesting now. You said the author. Now, uh, generally when we preach from New Testament books, we'll say, you know, Paul says this, or Peter says this, or James says this. Why do you refer to the author? Be- because we don't know who wrote the book of ah, Hebrews. Okay. Um, you know, there's been a lot of debate on, uh, on the author of, of Hebrews. For a long time, people believed that it was, it was Paul. Um, Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. And mm-hmm. I, um, even when I would read Hebrews, it just it didn't feel like Paul. Mm-hmm. You know, pa- Paul's got a, he's got a style. He's got right. a way of communicating. Right. For example, uh, Paul, in his letters, often refers to God the Father. Right. Um, if you look at the book of Hebrews, that, that phrase is, is not mm. there. Um, you know, Paul uses Jesus Christ a lot. Um, yeah. and, and in the book of Hebrews, I believe it only comes up three times. Sure. Uh, Paul sometimes reverses those and goes, uh, Christ Jesus. Right. He right. does that a lot, like yeah. plus minus 70 times in, sure. his, in his letters. And, um, you know, we don't, we don't see that uh, a ton in, in Hebrews. And, and so it, it's either Paul went, I've got a particular way of writing, but then if I'm, <laughs> when I write the book of Hebrews, I'm going to change it up completely, which I, I, I just don't think, I don't think that that's what happened. Right. And so I, I don't think Paul wrote the book, the book of Hebrews. Um, and, and I mean, even if you, if you look at the New Testament, if you look at Paul's letters, uh, here's a little uh, a nugget for folks listening. Mm. Some people may, may not know this, but if you look at the letters, they're, they're in order, kind of descending order of the length of the books. Right, right. right? So, so these are Paul's letters. Right. So uh, Romans will be right. first because it has 16 chapters uh, all the way to Philemon or Philemon, mm-hmm. depending on you know, where you went to school, determine how you pronounce that, um, which has one chapter. Right. So, so I think even the, the guys, when they're putting the, the scriptures together, when they're putting the letters together to form the New Testament, they, I think they knew, like, hey, I don't think Paul wrote mm, this one, right? Um, so, so even the way the way where it's placed, right, kind of leaves room for us to go. Okay, it wasn't Paul; could have been someone else, right? Um, our African, you know, theologians, those who came before us, you know, Tertullian was was one of the first people to go. Hey, I don't think sure. Paul wrote this. So we we can even go that far back and go. Hey, okay. Look, uh, uh, if we study this properly, I don't think Paul Paul wrote this. Mm-hmm. Um, Tertullian actually thinks it was Barnabas because sure. if you look at Hebrews in its original language, um, the, the the Greek that's used is it's kind of like higher grade, uh, okay. you know. And and so this had to be someone who was very very familiar with uh, Jewish uh, customs, uh, the Jewish lifestyle, um, sure. the Old Testament, uh, but also very well versed in the Greek, um, and so Barnabas was mm. was that guy. So Tertullian kind of thinks it was was Barnabas. Um, uh, Augustine as well uh, disagreed with the, the notion that Paul Paul could have written it. Um, Martin Luther, mm-hmm. the German reformer, right. um, he he thinks Apollos wrote it. Sure. You know, so so again, there's a an, another kind of well respected theologian. Uh, who, after studying the scriptures over and over again, was kind of like, oh, I don't think Paul wrote this. Right. Um, and, and some some think it was Luke, you know. So so the names the names are out there to yeah. like who yeah. who could have written this, um, and that can leave people going, well, is it really the word of God, right? Like like right. if if we don't know who wrote it, right, then right, then right. can this be trusted as the word of God? Um, and here I want to go again to one of our African theologians um, who has one of the coolest names ever. It's o- Origin. Um, I mean, that is that is really cool. Uh, origin. O- o- origin. Okay. Uh, sure. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly, um, but Origin of Alexandra. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, he he says this. He says, guys, look, it, it doesn't really matter um, who wrote it. What we do know is that it it is the word of God, mm, uh, sure. that the Holy Spirit... Um, uh, you know, was was very very much present in yeah. in this letter being penned, and uh, and so we can look at it as the word of God. But sure. but then he he points to Hebrews, like Hebrews reveals that it is you know 
the word of God and it can be counted as part of mm. kind of the apostolic writings. Um, and I love that. I love the fact that scripture interprets scripture, uh, yeah, you know? Amen. So, so yeah. if, if you want to know where that is, you can go to Hebrews chapter 13, uh, verse 23, uh, where the mention of Timothy, uh, mm. is, is kind of put out there and, um, you can go read it, but, but, but you see that connection. It's like, okay, so, you know, whoever wrote this was in the apostolic circles. Like right, they, they right. knew, they knew those guys. So, you know, there was there was trust. There was uh, there there was relationship. They um, there was a connection there. Uh, alternatively, we can go to Hebrews uh, chapter chapter two. Grab my Bible and read it real quick. So Hebrews chapter two says this, verse three. Uh, the second part of of verse three says, "This salvation had its beginning when it was spoken of by the Lord, and it was confirmed to us by those who heard Him." Mm. You know, so. Um, so it, it's it's like there's this confirmation of like um, whoever the writer was. He's like I, I was, I was in the apostolic circle, sure. um, and so the apostles knew who I was, right, and trusted me. And so if I wrote something to a group of people, then 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 that was considered trustworthy, mm. uh, and and the Holy Spirit is in it. So Amen. so based on on those. Um, you know, it's enough. It's enough for us as the church to go. Okay, this is this is God's word, and, mm. and we can trust it. Amen. Yeah. So good. So you mentioned the rights of Hebrews rights to this group of believers or this group of people, should I say? I think that there's a number of uh, categories of people that he's writing to. Yeah. But uh, so who is he writing to? And maybe kind of say. It's obviously applicable to them because he's writing to them. How is it applicable to us today in a broad sense? I mean, we'll get into that throughout the series, I'm sure. sure. But in a, in a kind of uh, specific sense, who's he writing to? And then in a maybe broad, more broad sense, uh, kind of how does it apply to us today? Yeah. Again, a lot of debate on who this letter was written to, who this book was written to. And that debate is largely because of, you know, when was this written? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, some people are of the opinion that this was written uh, before, you know, AD seventy um, or seventy AD, right. um, and and then there's another group of people that are like, no, it was written after that. So what's the significance of that time? You know, AD seventy. Right. Well, that's that's when the uh, the Romans showed up in um, man in in violence sure. that can only be imagined, and. Um, and destroyed the temple in Jerusalem, sure. right? So, uh, so that was significant because the temple was the place where um, you know Jewish people would go to to be with God, essentially, yeah. Yeah. right? And um, and so now that's destroyed, mm, right? So, so so depending on you know um, where you where you land on when this was written, that will shape who it was written to. Now. I said on Sunday, I, I am of the opinion that it was written after AD seventy, okay, um, after the destruction of the temple, and um, and, and his why. If you look at the book of Hebrews, you you'll quickly pick up that a lot of Jesus as priest, mm. as our high priest, is spoken of, right? Um, which is something that the other writers of the New Testament don't really like labor on um, in the Gospels. It's clear that Jesus is communicated to us as prophet and right. as king, right? right? right. So yeah. prophet is the one who brings the word, um, repent, the kingdom mm-hmm. of God is near. And uh, and then king, you know, he he is the king of kings, yeah. you know. So so you see that, but but very little on him as kind of the, the priest, the high priest, right. the right. high priest. Sure. Um, even Paul doesn't really go too much into it. Maybe he... he he brings it up in First Corinthians, um, but but still doesn't doesn't really make it clear the way the writer of, the, of Hebrews does. Um, I would go on to say the the other apostles, you know, Peter, uh, John, sure. um, not so much. I mean, I guess you could go to Peter and say that you know he talks about it when he refers to us as you know, the priesthood of all believers. Right, but right. again, not a direct connection to Jesus as the high priest. Yeah. Um, and and John, very similar in the book of Revelation, you know, refers to God's people as priests who will serve God. Um, but again, no direct connection. Right, right. But the writer of, of Hebrews, man, he, it, it is like to say that it is clear would be an understatement. He 
does not hold back. Sure. Like right out the gates, he's just like, okay, I want to talk to you guys about Jesus. Mm. Here's who he is. And one of those things is that he is the high priest. Sure. Um, now, now the reason I, I use that as, a, as evidence to say that this was written after the destruction of the temple is that he, he's writing to a people who are, are misplaced, mm. are confused, they don't have a temple anymore. So because they sure. don't have a temple, then wow. they don't have a high priest. They don't have someone in that role. Right. And and so there's a bit of confusion, particularly because of what the high priest would do. They they were kind of the is the right English word intermediary. Is that is that the correct English word? I think so, yes. There we go. <laughs> um we have Bibles here in front of us, but we don't have a, a dictionary. Um and um and, and so they don't have that person who would would stand between um them and God. Mm. And that leads to a lot of confusion and a lot of looking to the heavens and going, okay, what do we do? Like, how do we sure, hear from God sure. now? You know? Um, and, and so the writer of Hebrews comes in and he goes, I mean, right out the gates, he's like, he, God, God has been speaking and God continues to speak. Yeah, sure. Oh, and by the way, remember Jesus? Mm. He, he's that one that stands in the middle. Like he's your, like so good. he is sure. the high priest. And, and, and so I think had that been said, while the temple was still around, it would have been really hard for Jewish people to go, wait, hold on, what? Right, like, right. That, that's a big deal. It really, it's massive. And it's not to say that Paul or the, the writers, the other, um, the, the apostles, the other guys that wrote the other letters in the New Testament, it's not that they didn't believe that Jesus was the high priest, you know, um, but... But I think they they were being strategic and and being right, wise right. and like how do we communicate this so that we don't create barriers and boundaries mm. for people. Um, but when the writer of Hebrews shows up, he's like, "Bro, there's no temple." Sure. <laughs> like, sure. Like that thing that you were like you cherished so much that yeah. beacon that like wow yeah it's like yeah it's sure. it's just made of you know earthly things right. and. Um, but there is a temple that cannot be destroyed. Mm. You know what I mean? And there is a high priest who he's the real deal. Yeah. Amen. So, so, so that's, that's where, that's where I land. And that's where we'll be looking at the book of Hebrews from, from that time frame. But then who, who then is it written to? Right. Um, it's, it's to, it's, I believe to a Jewish community, um, or folks who, uh, are Jewish but had a huge Greek influence. You know, the terminology is like Hellenistic, you know, Jews. Right, it's, right. You're Jewish, but you you grew up very Greek. Right. And um and so that's who it's been written to. But they they are misplaced. Um they're scattered. They sure. they no one's really in Jerusalem because well there's no temple anymore. So mm. why would we go there? Um the Romans have taken over. Sure. Um so you they're scattered everywhere and they just they're trying to find handles of like, okay, what do we do with our faith? Yeah. You know, so like today you have, um, you know, you would have people who love Jesus are committed and are convinced. Um, and then you'll have people who are kind of in the middle. Right. Some things have happened. Right. Uh, you know, we could point to church hurt. We could point to, um, you know, just, just life that moves at 200 kilometers per mm -hmm. hour and, you know, we feel like we got, we just got thrown out of the vehicle, and um, uh, and then you've got folks who don't believe at all. Right. It's like I've been around church, but you know, especially when we think about South Africa, that uh, people will refer to it as a Christian nation, but I mean, it's far from that. But sure. but there's enough of Christianity for people to be familiar with a lot of things, but they they're not believers. Sure. Wow. Well. I think that would have been the same context. It's just you add the. The, the reality that the temple is no longer there. Mm. I think people are really desperate to hold on to something that will give them hope. Wow. And so the writer of Hebrews goes, here's a, here's a book for you. Mm. Yeah. So rich. So good. Um, as, I, as I reflect back on Sunday, well, maybe as, as you reflect back on Sunday, what are some of the things that you would, you know, if you've pushed to, 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 to not necessarily preach on, Hebrews chapter one, because we, we covered covered Hebrews chapter one intro. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it not necessarily preach on, but what would you want to like, man, that, that was just something that, that I would want the people at Ruder Fellowship to to hear uh, again, to double click, uh, 
you know, again. Wow, there's so much in there. And that's what's hard about preaching on a Sunday. I know if it was if it was up to me, we'd be sitting there for an hour, 30 minutes for sure. But but people have lunches that they have to get to. You could pack a lunch, baby, you mm. know. Um, no, there, there was a ton in there. I'd say I'd say two things and then and then the second one I'll probably double click on or you can ask sure. a little bit about it. So the first one was that God God still speaks. Mm. Um, I mentioned that, you know, the, the Hebrews were probably in a, in a context or an environment where they're going, you know, does, is God still going to speak to us because now there's no temple, there's no right, priest. Right. And, and so the writer, right out the gates, no introduction, you know? So again, this, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, unlike Paul, know Paul you know, yeah, Paul's right. like, hey, everyone, yeah. my name is Paul, and, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, greetings. And <laughs> nah, the writer of Hebrews just goes, all right, Let's get to it. Right. Um, and so right out the gates, he, he, he says, long ago, God spoke to the fathers by the prophets at different times and in different ways. So he, he reminds them that God has been speaking, that, right. that, that we serve a God who wants to be in relationship. And to be in relationship with someone re- requires communication. And it's right. God who initiates that communication. And, and he has done it in different ways uh, mm-hmm. and at different times through different people, uh, which just speaks to the the rich diversity of God's communication. Mm. I spoke about the eloquence of God. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so the the writer points back and he goes, "Hey, don't don't forget. Like, but also I want you to know that in in these last days he has spoken to us by his son. Yeah. Uh, and so he points us back to Jesus. He's yeah. like, okay, but d- don't forget Jesus, right? right. So so right. Jesus. Uh, is is in a sense God's final words that if you if you want to know what it is that that God is saying to us, mm. then we need to listen to Jesus. Jesus Himself says that no one can come to the Father except yeah. through Me. Um, so so th- that's a big one, um, and and I say that because we we find ourselves often um, much like the Hebrews looking to the heavens in yeah. our circumstances yeah. in our situation going. God, are you still there? Yeah, sure. You know, God, are you, are you, is there still a relationship? We forget words like, I will never leave you mm. nor forsake you. Yeah. Um, so, so God is speaking and, and, you know, people often ask like, okay, but where, how right. can I hear from him? Right. Like, what, what do I need to do? What, what, you know, what are the three steps? Yeah. What's, what's yeah. the magic uh, that, that, that I need to perform? And it's like, you know, just open up your word. Yeah. Open up God's word. He's, he's, he speaks primarily through his word. Mm. Um, so, and, and Jesus is the word, like John yeah, one, Amen. Yeah, you know, John one, one is like, J- Jesus goes, Hey, I am from the very beginning. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm, I'm the word, you know? Yeah. So, so again, pointing, pointing to Jesus as um, the God's final words found in him. God, uh, everything that God wants to say to us is found in Jesus. So that, that would be the first thing so that good, I, yeah. I want to point to and remind people of like, it's hard. It's, it's, you know, waking up and you've just gone through the most, you're exhausted, mm. you're tired, you feel battered and bruised by life and society and work and toxic environments and I, all of it. Sure. But it's it's that, you know what, I'm I'm going to come to God's word first and I'm just going to open so it good. up. And even if it's just reading a chapter. Right. And just sitting in there and, and being reminded that God loves you. Mm. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. And he still speaks to you. Yeah, it it's powerful. It's really powerful. Um, I find myself in those moments sometimes where I'm just like, ah, I'm good. I'm gonna, I'll figure things out on yeah. my own. Yeah, and it never ends well. Yeah. So, well, I'll come back to this at the end of the day, like when, yeah. I, when I feel like it. Yeah. Which inevitably, is yeah. something that I don't necessarily feel like doing. That's so true. So, yeah. So okay. that's that's the one. But still speaks. Amen. Um. The the second one is is you know. On what authority should we be listening to Jesus? If Jesus is the final right, words of right. God, like what authority? Like what? What's? Give me some reasons to why mm. that is of any merit. Like right. Jesus is the one that we should go to, and and it's almost like the writer of Hebrews knew that folks would probably be asking that. Right. You know, like yeah. that's probably where they'd go. And so he goes, "Okay, cool. I'll let me let me answer that real quick right. for you." Um, cool. You know, he says, "In these last days, he has spoken to us by his son." God has appointed him heir of all things and made the universe through him. Sure. Um, the sun is the radiance of God's glory mm. and the exact expression of his nature, sustaining all things by his powerful word. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So, so he goes, hey, hey, Jesus is the heir of all things. 
that means Jesus owns everything. Yeah. And he owns everything because he created everything. Colossians 1, you can go there and, and just read yeah. what Paul says. Yeah. Um, so so everything belongs to Jesus. He is the only, he's the one that looks at everything and goes, mine. Yeah, yeah. On that authority, you know, you can listen to him. Um, but he doesn't stop there. He goes, the, the sun is the radiance of mm. God's glory. And yeah. I love the word radiance. Some translations use reflection, which I think is is not the right translation. It's not the right English word to use there. Radiance is better. And I, I said this on Sunday that the 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 moon reflects mm-hmm. the sun. Yeah. Right? The right. what the light that comes from the sun. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but the sun radiates light, yeah. like because it it is the source of light. And and so Jesus is that. Like that's yeah. what the writer of Hebrews is saying is that he's not just a reflection, but like he, he is, yeah. he is, you know, and this speaks to the Trinity, which we've kind of covered in our series, We Are Theologians. Right, so if right. you haven't listened to that, I'd encourage you to go listen to that. But we talk a little bit about the Trinity in terms of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit are, are you know, equal in, in value and, and essence and so forth, but distinct in function. Yeah. And, and so the writer of Hebrews reminds mm, us again mm. to go, hey, listen, this is, this is Jesus, this is Jesus. Yeah. God, the Son. So, so the the radiance of God's glory and the exact expression of His nature, the exact imprint, sure, other translations sure. would say. Um, and, and Jesus says this Himself. He's like, if you, if you want to know the Father, then then know me, right? right like, if right. you see me, you see the Father, yeah. because I am the exact representation. I'm the exact imprint. Um, I carry His character. If you want to know how loving God the Father is. Come to me. If you want to know how uh, uh, forgiving God the Father is, come to me. If you want to know how patient mm. God the Father is, come, come to, to me. me. Yeah. Um, and and so that's just a, yet another beautiful way that the writer of Hebrews points us to Jesus and goes, and that's why you can trust him on yeah. his word. Oh, so good. Um, he goes on to saying, sustaining all things by his powerful word. This was a big one for me when I studied it. That God is not just the creator, or Jesus is not just the creator of all things, but the sustainer mm. of all things. Um, and he does it by his word. Yeah. You know, the the writer of Hebrews here is intentional about his use of the word, the word, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, instead of logos, which is what is commonly used, he uses the word r- rema, which is spoken word. Oof. So... So Jesus is sustaining all things with his spoken word. Man, come on. Um, you know, ocean, do this. Um, you know, atmosphere, do this. Uh, stars, go there. Let's make it personal. Heart, Yo, keep beating. Yeah, um, so good. And, and so if we believe that to be true, then it begs the question, um, why are we not asking Jesus to yeah, speak? Yeah, wow into our lives. Mm-hmm. If he sustains everything by his word. So so he sustains my joy. Yeah. He, he sustains my hope. He sustains my faith. Man. Jesus, I need you to speak into my life. Yeah. So that I might oh, be sustained so and good. persevere and continue. So why is this relevant? Well, again, if we look at the Hebrew like the Hebrews, the the the, the audience, the 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 you know the, the guys at the right of the Hebrews the book of Hebrews was writing to is like they needed yeah, to they, persevere. Yeah, they needed right. to be sustained. And so he says, okay, then go to Jesus. Don't, yeah. don't go to all these other things, mm. which we do. Right. Right. Um, was so controlling. Yeah. But we need to go to Jesus because he's the one that sustains all things. Uh, I think I said on Sunday that if, if, if our savior is a speaking savior, then that means the church, which he birthed by his death and resurrection the church is a Man, speaking church, good. yeah, which good. which is true, right? We yeah. speak the gospel, mm-hmm. we we share Jesus. Yeah, it's, it's got to happen by speaking, um, but we speak to one another with words of encouragement, yeah. which the writer of Hebrews is gonna he's gonna point us to in a couple of chapters. Um, you know, speaking words of encouragement to one another, um, speaking truth, yeah, speaking speaking love. Um, the church needs that, yeah. So. So uh, there's probably the, the you know the the second big portion. So the one is God still speaks. Yeah. He has been speaking, he still speaks, and his final words are found in Jesus. Yeah. You know, on what authority? Um he, he's the heir of all things, the creator of everything. He is the, the radiance of God's glory, he's the sure. exact representation sure. um of the Father. 
and he sustains all things with his word. And then can I, can I, man, I know I'm, I'm speaking for hey. long. I'm just super, no, no, super no, excited. This, yeah. The, the book going. of Hebrews is incredible, but yeah. he, he then says this after making purification mm. for sins. So if, if any of those things you're still going, ah, oh, I don't know this one, this one takes it home after making purification for sins. He sat down at the right hand mm. of the majesty on high. Yo. And, and that just points us to Jesus as the purifier. Yeah. Um he 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 he's the purifier of not just sins but all sin. Man. Yeah. And um and when we when we read a phrase like that we 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 should think of the word atonement, right? Sure. So sure. to atone um is uh is to is to cover a a debt. That's one way to think of it. It mm-hmm. is to uh satisfy a wrongdoing. Um I said it this way on Sunday. It's the process by which people remove obstacles, so that they might be reconciled to God. Mm-hmm. You know, and, sure. and so there's uh, there's there's this atoning that needs to happen for us to enter into a relationship with God the Father. Yeah, sure. And that's what that's what the writer of Hebrews is pointing to. He says, after making purification for sins, like after Jesus atoned for us, um, this was so big that the the Jewish people had a, a day right. that was dedicated to it. Um, once a year, there was this day called the Day of Atonement. Um, you can go read about it in Leviticus chapter 16. And um, God's very specific about what is to happen and what it means. And uh, But it, by way of summary, I'll say this. The, 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 the point of it all, the point of the Day of Ato- Atonement was um, it was a, a symbolic purification um, for for the people of God, like they needed to sure. be purified, sure. yeah. right? They yeah. were they were they were dirty. They mm-hmm. were um, they were covered in sin, so they needed to be purified. So it was a symbolic, right? And I'll come back to that in a moment. But it was a symbolic purification, right? Um, second thing is that it it, it provided a a symbolic payment um, for the debt that we owed to God because of our sin, mm-hmm. and then lastly, uh, it allowed God to maintain. His presence with His people, uh, sure. with without sure. compromising on His holiness. And I said this on Sunday that that see God cannot be in the same place as sin. Yeah. yeah. Um. I, I wish I had unpacked a little bit more here uh, on Sunday, but let me do it now. Mm. When someone says that, sometimes we tend to think that it's like God goes, "Oh, you like sin. Like I don't want it. To, I don't want it to right. be on me. I don't right. want to get dirty. I right. don't want to." Um, uh, yes, but 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 that's an incomplete understanding. Mm-hmm. Um, when God stands in the presence of sin, He completely annihilates and sure, destroys sure. it wow. because wow. His holiness is just so massive mm-hmm. and glorious and powerful. Sure. So, so if 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 we stood before God covered in sin, right, without the purifying work of Jesus, right, it, like I I. It would be, it would be like us trying to get close to the sun, mm, man. Um, man. And and if you know anything about, is it ast- ast- astrology? Is that right? Uh, man, we are out of our lane here. <laughs> uh, but if you know anything about the galaxy and right, the universe, there we go. There we yeah. go. Um, you know that anything that gets close to the sun is just completely destroyed, right? Because of the just the the sheer power and heat and glory mm. of the sun and and. God spoke the Son sure. into existence yeah. through His Son Jesus. Mm-hmm. Like it's just so. So that's it. It the Day of Atonement allowed for God to maintain His presence. He was like, "Okay, cool. You've you've done that. Right. We can continue to be in relationship. I can continue to be in Your presence." So anyway, so um, so that was the the Day of Atonement, and my quick way of summary, you know, what atonement. Uh, the purpose of it and what it meant. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the writer of Hebrews comes and says, "Okay, look, I need you to to look at Jesus through that lens. Mm-hmm. Um, remember what you guys have been doing, generation after generation right, after generation. Right. On that one day that happened once a year, Jesus shows up and he goes, okay, no, no, no more sacrifices.' Because the, what they would do is the priest would go into the temple, go into the holies of holies. He would sprinkle 
uh, animal blood. Um, it's a whole thing. Go read about it in Leviticus. But he he would sprinkle blood, and and that was a way of um, kind of atoning uh, right, right. Uh, the the sins being forgiven, and and that would happen once a year. So every year he would do that, and and then there were some requirements on the priest that went in that right. he, there were certain things that he had to do and be. Um, otherwise, things would not end well for him. Um, uh, I mean, so much so that they so they they would put bells on. Um, on the corner of his of his garment, and um, and they did that because only he could go into the temple, uh, into the holy of holies. Right. Um, but then they would tie like a piece of rope to his leg, um, because if if he had not done what God had told him to do, the moment he got into the holy of holies, he would like he would drop dead, and that's just because God's holiness right. is serious. Right. So he would drop dead, and so. Um, you know, the folks outside, they were constantly listening, going, if we hear bells, and that's good, because that right. means he's doing right. what he needs to be doing. He's moving around, he's sprinkling the blood, he's performing what God has told him to do. Yeah. But if we don't hear anything, that means that brother's dead. <laughs> um, he was pretending and performing, he was mm. lying, because, I mean, we asked him a ton of questions, like, bro, is your life like this? Are you doing right. this? Are you being obedient? And in some cases, I can see someone going, um... Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm, you know, how are you good. doing? It's like on yeah, a Sunday. How are yeah, you doing? Exactly. Oh, fantastic. You know, God is good all the time. Yeah. All the time. God mm-hmm. is good. <laughs> Meanwhile, your life is an absolute mess. Right. You are living in sin. You're you're being disobedient to God. Um and uh the the difference is in those days that that would cost you your life. Right, right. Jesus hadn't hadn't sat down yet. J- Jesus exactly. Jesus yeah. And and but because Jesus came to purify mm, so good he came to atone he came to be the final sacrifice so when jesus shows up and he dies on the cross and then he he rose from the grave um what that did for us is that we no longer needed mm. a earthly priest to go in once a year to go you know atone on our behalf sure sure jesus did it like god looked at that sacrifice and said that's sufficient mm. You know, whereas year after year after year, he'd go, oh, not enough, right. not right. quite, not quite, not quite, not quite. But God knew that there was a plan mm. and and it was set in motion when Jesus showed up here on earth. Wow. So, so after making purification for sins, we're told that he sat down. Ugh. So, So the high priest never sat in the temple. He was constantly working until he was done and then he came out, right? Jesus goes, I don't need to keep walking. Sure. I don't need to so keep good. pacing back and forth like your earthly priest was. Um, I'm going to sit down. Mm, so and I'm not going to sit down anywhere. I'm going to sit down at the right hand yeah. of my father. Um, so on the cross, Jesus shouts, it is finished. He demonstrates that mm. by taking a seat. Sure. So if we doubt it is finished, we go, where is Jesus right mm, now? Yeah. No, it's finished. He, he he has he has put his life on the line. He mm. he he has shed his blood, every single wow. drop, body broken, so that we might be purified. For all of those who surrender their lives to Jesus, that's that's what happens. Like when you say, "I cannot save myself." Yeah. Um, yeah. I am like that earthly priest that keeps yo, going in, yo, and yo. it's just never enough. I don't even know if I make it to the holies of holies, you right. know, like as soon right. as I walk into the, 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 the tent or the temple, boom, I'm gone, yeah. you know, yeah. because it's like, Oh, I got sin in my life and I haven't confessed it. And I haven't come to Jesus. I haven't, sure. like, it's just so yeah. much happening in my life. And, um, but if I go, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to lay all of that at the foot of the cross. Cause yeah. Jesus has died for that. Um, Jesus goes, okay, cool. I'll take that. Mm. Um, so, so, so that's a powerful one. And, and I think yeah. it's one that we need to sit in for a while. I think sometimes we we lose the we lose the the awe and wonder and reverence of all of that. Yeah, we normalize it. I use the example of a an air purifier. Mm, you know, yeah, the difference between yeah. an air purifier and a diffuser. Uh, a lot of us have diffusers. You know, so we have our oils and everything, and they're great. You know, sure. they smell incredible, uh, <laughs> and, and they have some benefits to us physically. Uh, but by and large, their purpose is to make the space smell nice. Right. Whereas an air purifier, it actually cleanses the air. Mm. You know, um, yeah. it uh, it removes it of allergens and yeah. toxic 
yeah, like all the bad Guaranteed, stuff. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and it also has the ability to uh, remove bad odor, yeah. right? So there's right. a component and, of it of yeah. a, uh, as well. Um, whereas the diffuser, what it does is it just it just basically places the nice smelling stuff mm-hmm. on top of the, over, the, yeah. the bed. Yeah, yeah. and <laughs> so, you know, it doesn't take too long before it's like, oh, I can still smell that thing. Yeah. And yeah. then you diffuse again, again and you diffuse yeah. again. Yeah. You don't really deal with the issue. Uh, Jesus is is the air purifier. Sure. Sure. Right, he comes to cleanse mm. because before Jesus, God looks at us and is like, "You guys smell. Yo, yo, yo. There is a stench in here, yeah. and if I show up, mm. it's not going to end well for you guys. Right. Um, I need to purify the air, yeah. you know. So, and I need to, to remove those bad odors. And so, the question is: Are you willing to come to Jesus for Him to do that for you, or yeah. are you satisfied with just? throwing on nice smelling stuff on sure. top of the stench yeah. of sin that is in your life. Mm. Um, and, and Jesus wants to do that. You know what I mean? He, yeah. he died yeah. so that he could do that for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so it's, it's, it's when we lose the, the awe and wonder of that, sure. I think when we normalize Jesus death and resurrection, mm. I worry for us as as the church, as Christians. I something I worry about for myself. Yeah. Um I always want to be just blown away by what Jesus has done. Wow. And and the way that I live will reveal that. Mm. You know. And yeah. I know we can yeah. pretend and sure. perform. You know, people do that all the time. But um for so long, right? Yeah. I mean I guess I guess I mean we can do that, but yeah. for so long until yeah. I mean it's like going to the bush. You it's dark. Like when you're out there, um, you know, you can't see anything. Mm. But after a while, your eyes just adjust to the darkness. Yeah. And sure. giving you the impression that like, oh, no, it's there's light now. Mm. You know? Yeah. I can see because there's light. It's like, no, your eyes have just adjusted yeah. to the darkness. Yeah. Yeah. You're still in darkness. Right. I think a lot of us, we can just kind of adjust to the bad odor mm. in our lives. Sure. And... And then when we get around people, we just quickly throw on some perfume, sure, sure. pretend, perform, and then when we go back home, it's like it's fine. Mm. I'm just gonna I'm gonna live in this dump sure. called sin. Um, but Jesus wants to, man. He just he, and when I say he wants to, he really wants to. Yeah, he really wants to. Like he came on a rescue mission, sure, knowing that it would cost him. God the Father sent His mm. Son, knowing the cost. Yeah, it's more than want. It's like yeah. I long to be in relationship with you. Sure. But will you let go? Mm. Will you surrender control? The little control that we think we have. <laughs> right. And just come come to Jesus who will reconcile us to the Father by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. If 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 someone said to me, only you have one message to mm-hmm. preach, that's it. Yeah. Because that radically changed my life. Mm. And I've seen how it's radically changed the lives of other people. Sure. And to be in awe and wonder. Uh, it, 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 yeah. Mm. Yeah, it, it should change the way we sing, the way we pray, yeah. the way we speak, the way we handle money, the way we, it's just, God, this is all, all of it belongs to you. Mm. Um, you know, how, how can I thank you? How can I, how can I praise you? How can I, um, because had it not been for you, yeah. I would be dragged by my friends. Sure. Because I'm dead in my son. Mm. Anyway. I mean, maybe I'd like to push a little bit there. Is it, in a sense, you know, Sunday by Sunday, <clears throat> uh, we kind of hear, you know, you'll, you'll preach a message and, and they'll, you, you'll always say this, you'll say the gospel demands a response. Mm-hmm. And even that, even now, as you're unpacking, you were, you were kind of alluding to that response, and you were saying, "Hey, if you haven't come to Jesus yet, come to Jesus for all of the reasons that you've just said." Yeah. You know. Um, but then, if you have come to Jesus, is is that kind of I think your your des- your 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 priestly kind of uh, desire for us as a community to say, "Hey, we normalize this, and yeah. and we normalize like even just the gathering." on a Sunday. We normalize what we yeah. do on at family groups. We normal we've normalized it to the point that we've almost kind of lost that awe of, of Jesus as our high priest. Yeah. Would you say that that is kind of like the the, the desire for us as, as a community as we go through these next twenty three weeks 
uh, broken up. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And um, the gospel demands a response. And we are always responding to the gospel. So right. even a non-response sure, it, is a response right. to the gospel. Um, but someone who ha- has had their life radically changed by what Jesus has done, the response is just, it's, you can't contain it. You can't, you can't. That's why, you know, when I think of our brothers and sisters in places where they are being persecuted right. for being a Christian, yeah. they don't back down and go, well, okay, well, mm, I guess, you know, yeah. you know, I uh, guess we can't share our faith, so sure. we won't do that. I guess we can't pray. Well, right. I guess, you know, God won't be hearing from me until I get to heaven. <laughs> right. It's they go, okay, um, we're just going to figure out another way right. because I can't contain sure. what is in me. Sure. Um, it is it is evidence, you know. I'm not going to say singing is what saves us. Sure, praying doesn't save us. Sure, giving, being generous doesn't save. Serving doesn't like that. Just doesn't save us. Mm. But it's evidence, mm-hmm. you know, to take from James. Faith without works is dead. It's evidence of the fact that Jesus has completely changed up how we yeah. think, feel, do things. Yeah. Um, so that's what I mean when I say it demands a response. And I, and I think even when you think about the Sunday gathering, um, in all honesty, it's like any space. We do this. As as people, we do this. It's it's weird. Like, if I know people are coming to my house, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, if I know, like, you know, yeah, I'm about yeah, to host yeah, some yeah. people. Right. Th- there is a level of like, okay, let me prepare. Right. Let me right. get things in order, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and, and I understand that it, it Depends who's coming. I'll sure. be honest. It yeah, depends. Sure. Who's, I mean, if Jono is coming over to my place, I'll be like, oh, I'm still going to like not leave my, you know, undergarments <laughs> lying around. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to prepare, man, right. because I want to host you. Thank you. Um, I've always felt, felt very hosted. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but, uh, but it's the same with someone who I'm meeting for the first time or, you know, we're, we kind of know each other. There's a level of like, preparation mm. in my space right, right because i'm about to welcome someone in because there's something i want to communicate to them right when we gather on a sunday there is preparation yeah um not just of the physical things around us but there's preparation of heart mm. and um and knowing that i'm showing up uh to be with my brothers and sisters because i'm wanting to communicate something to them that you are loved more than you could ever imagine. Yeah, amen. Yeah. And and then we come to hear from God's word and and we do all these things corporately, but there is there is a sense of like wow, this is this is just a, a an appetizer of what awaits mm, us throughout sure. eternity. Yeah. That it's not just going to be a rooted fellowship, but there's going to be other oh, churches that on. have gone yeah, before us, so churches that are with us today, churches that will come after us who are all saying the same thing. Yeah. There is a, there is this this God man mm. who came, didn't have to, sure. but came to live the life that we should have lived, died the death that all of us deserved, rose from the mm. grave, defeated sin, death, and Satan, and after making purification for sins, sure. sat down at the right hand mm. of God the Father. I'm like, one, I can't wait to gather with my brothers and sisters yeah. here yeah. in the same way I cannot wait to gather with them in heaven throughout eternity. Yeah. yeah, So I can't wait to do that and I can't wait to just speak and speaking in in song and in prayer yeah. and, and in sure. serving and engaging and generously giving and I can't, I can't wait. But I'm not always like that. Like I'm going to be honest. Sure. I'm not, sure. And when I'm not like that and that kind of speaks a little bit to what we're going to cover this coming Sunday uh, in chapter two uh, of Hebrews. It's it's sometimes because my eyes my eyes drift. Mm, mm. They, my heart drifts. All right. And that's why we need to be reminded again another thing that right. the writer of Hebrews talks right. about. Yeah. Like <laughs> late in the book, he's like, some of y'all forget. Right. That's why you need to gather. Right. Um so, so yeah, uh, I mean you asked a simple question and I no. It took Great. us down a long journey, but good. the, the gospel does demand response. And I think we need to say that to ourselves. Yeah. How am I responding to the gospel? How am I responding to what Jesus has done? And then be specific. Mm. How am I responding to the gospel 
in my relationships, right. in my marriage, yeah. in my money, in my emotions, yeah. in my ambitions. And then you can just, just work through what we've just gone through. Am I recognizing that sure. Jesus is the heir of all things and the creator of all things with my money and with my relationships mm. and with my, or am I living as if I am? Well, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. is is Jesus, like, the, the radiance of God's glory? Is yeah. he being glorified in how I handle X, Y, Z? Or is it more about my own kingdom? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I really, I, one of the, you know, being honest with ourselves is a is a huge step. And then being okay that you're not okay. Mm-hmm. So when you get to that and you realize, oh my goodness, I'm, like you look yourself in the mirror and you're like, I'm sure. not in a good place. Yes. The temptation and the the voice in our in our ear goes, yeah, you're not. Look mm. how bad you look. Sure, sure. Cover that, like diffuse that. Mm. Dif- yeah. You sure. know, you know, put some, I don't know, peppermint yeah. Yeah. oil on that. You know, like <laughs> yeah. you'll be good. And yeah. and and it's in those moments where you've got to. You got to say, Jesus, I need you to speak mm. into my faith because I need to believe yeah. that you love me, that you care for me, that you are making me more and more like you in yeah. your sanctifying work. And and Jesus will show up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Um, last question I'd love to ask you. Sure. So in light of... Uh, the season that we're in as a church. So we've gone through our hashtag more, more series. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. went through uh, eating with Jesus. Um, in light of that, what would you, what, what is your desire for kind of folks of the church, members of the church, folks in family groups, you know, that we, 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 we had a, uh, we got the vision of, you know, who's your one more uh, yeah. inviting others to, to, to our gathering space, to, yeah. our, to our family group spaces. Um, but not, in terms of this this uh, this series of, of Hebrews, what would you say uh, in light of where we are as a church community in terms of the year? What would you, what is your desire for for folks uh, in these spaces? Yeah, yeah, you're going to hear a lot of that hashtag more um, because I I really believe God is calling us to experience more of His presence, mm-hmm. more of His power, and more of His promises in our lives, um, and that happens in our personal relationships with Jesus. Yeah. Um, our communal relationships with one another, mm-hmm. and then our missional relationships, yeah. and that's with the you know society, the right. world, however right. you want to phrase it. Um, and so, when I think about of the Book of Hebrews, it's I see a lot of that. Mm-hmm. I see us experiencing more of God, yeah. you know, through the High Priest. Right. And so, it's it's a leaning in and asking the Holy Spirit to continue to lead and guide us. Um, because that's that's what he does yeah. as the, as the spirit he he leads and guides and so so I'm gonna see a lot of that like you you can't turn the page and not see Jesus sure. in the book of sure. Hebrews yeah so and then then there's more of um, our communal lives like I want folks in in family groups and, and folks who aren't part of family groups want to get plugged into a family group right. um, we don't do it because it's like we have nothing else to do we do it because like as we'll see in the book of Hebrews it's it's the way that God works yeah yeah. God himself is in community. Mm. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, they are in community. And so why would we think, oh, you know, I'm good, I don't need that. Sure. You know, sure. I'll sign up for community light. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like yeah. if there's a package, I'm going to get the light package, you know, because I got, I got things to do, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm busy. Yeah. And, yeah. and I'm like, well, and I know I've said this before, but then, then you need some people in your life to be praying for you that you don't get those opportunities because sure. clearly you're too busy to be in community. Sure. Sure. A thing that God created yeah. for our good yeah. as an overflow of what he was already in. So yeah. Amen. more of his, uh, more of, of like experiencing that community. Um, mm. And we'll see that like the writer of Hebrews does not hold back. Sure. And then the last one is kind of in our, in our missional, uh, yeah. if you, th- you refer to our one mores. Yeah. And that's kind of the language that we're using. You know, we can feel overwhelmed. It's like, oh, how do I reach my whole neighborhood? How do right, I reach my right. whole, you know, department or my whole classroom? It's like, okay, then let's simplify it. Ask mm-hmm. God for one more. Yeah. Just say, God, one more. Yeah. And um, and I think 
the, the writer of Hebrews, when he writes this, he's, he's writing to believers, but he's also going, I need you guys to be thinking about your one more. Yeah. Yeah. H- sure. How will this make sense to those who aren't a part of God's family, who haven't mm-hmm. surrendered their lives to Jesus? Be- because they are also searching. Sure. Something in their life has been demolished. Right. It may not be the temple, sure. but Ooh. something in their life has been demolished. Yeah. And so they're also trying to figure out like, where do I go for hope? Mm. Um, and and as the church, as the people of God, we know where to go. So all all we do is just point. Yeah, people. Like, so well, I mean, as a runner, right? What do you call yeah. those people on the side of the road? That marshals. Are, yeah, yeah. That's what we are, yeah, man. It's good, man. We're yeah. just marshals, and 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 mm. we're just saying, hey, hey, you're going in the wrong direction. Mm. Come on, so good. And they'll fight you on that. Yeah. They'll be like, nah, man. Like, I want to go my own way. I'm like, I'm telling you, yeah. I've been there. Yeah. I know some people who've been there, like yes. that. I know something in your life has been demolished, that and you were you anchored yourself in that thing as if it was your everything, mm. and it has been ripped from you. But you know what can never be demolished. It's it's the gospel. Yeah. It's what Jesus has accomplished for us, and so so why don't you why don't you go go for that? Mm. But but they need to see us going for it, right? Yeah. Like. Yeah. Um, and and so I'm just praying that God would do that. Yeah, that we would become marshals in our city and beyond. Mm. That that we would we would be those who are experiencing much of God, who are in awe and wonder, even on the tough days. Sure, guys, you know, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, just show up. Yeah, and then watch God show off. Mm. That's so good. So good. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm sure there's tons more that we could do. Maybe yeah. we'll do some more of this. We don't know. Maybe, Maybe we'll do some more as we as we dig deeper into into the book of Hebrews. Uh, but I think to close our time, it'd be great to have our lead pastor pray for us, yeah. pray for pray for the community, yeah. and then uh, and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, I'd love to do that. I'll keep it short. Um, Father, would you continue to be with us, um, guide us? I pray for every single person that's listening to this. Uh, you know exactly where they are. Uh, and what season of life they're in, what they need from you. And so, Jesus, would you yeah. speak into their lives? Yeah. Uh, and would they be still enough to hear from you? Yes, Lord. Um, use your word. Uh, use the community. Um, use just an opportunity in a moment. Uh, you are in control of all these things because you are the creator of all of them. Yeah. And, Jesus, we thank you that you are seated at the right hand of the Father right now. Yeah. And the scriptures tell us that you are praying for us. You are interceding for us. You know our names. You know our circumstances. Um, So help us. Uh, It's in your beautiful name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor Onem, thank you. It's been a privilege. And uh, we we look forward to maybe the next time. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday uh, at our next gathering. And we pray that your times in family groups or serving departments, however you're going to be meeting and gathering with the saints this week, is a blessing. We look forward to connecting with you again next time. Take care.